book of Exodus this morning, chapter 17. The book of Exodus this morning, chapter 17. There was a little thought in my head last Lord's Day morning before uh, the prayer meeting. And during the prayer meeting, our brother Charlie Shields prayed, and while he did pray, he mentioned all about what was in this passage, and the Lord confirmed it for me through that, that this was to be the Lord's message for this morning. We're in Exodus chapter 17, and we're going to commence at verse number 8. Now, let's go down to verse 5. Let's go back to verse 5 just to get the, 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 the backdrop of it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel. And because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? And then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. And so Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword, and the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And we know that the Lord will bless that reading to our hearts this morning. Shortly after my own conversion, I made a very wise choice, a choice that gave me good standing and a choice this morning that gave me good grounding for the early days of my Christian life. Shortly after I was converted, I joined what was known as the local faith mission, prayer union. And I have a lot to be thankful for that prayer union this morning, because that was there at the prayer union where I learned the importance of the Word of God. It was at that wee prayer union where I learned the importance of fellowshipping with the people of God. I was only 20 at the time. And the rest of the men and women, they were old folk. Well, when you, and I'm talking about from 40 upwards, but they weren't all that old. And I'll tell you something now. That prayer union taught me how to pray. I don't know whether anybody here ever belonged to a, a, a faith mission prayer union or went to a prayer union meeting, but there was something about the prayer union that I never experienced. There was that oneness, there was that unity, there was that, and I'll tell you, Anaheim was shared, never went outside the four walls. We met in Bertie Bruce's home, big farmhouse. 
And boys, every Monday night at 8 o'clock, I couldn't wait to get there. You went in to the big sitting room, and there a big roaring fire was on. And there might have been a dozen and a half. That's 18 for the young ones. There might have been about 18 or so people gathered in, packed in like sardines, and there would have been a visiting speaker, and he would have sat at the corner, and he would have got up and spoke for about half an hour from the Word of God. And then we would have got down together, and we would have prayed together. And after about half an hour of prayer, maybe three quarters of an hour of prayer, then a time of fellowship afterward. And you know, I didn't want to go home. I'm telling you there was something about the Faith Mission Prayer Union today. I'll tell you something now. It was the best ground I ever got in the early days of my Christian life. But there was, there was a wee course they used to sing, well, most Monday nights, and you're always asked for a favorite, and there was Big Tommy Henderson, and there was Bertie Bruce, and there was Jim Bruce, and there was uh, Archie Beatty, and there was Mrs. Bruce, and the oh, there's a whole pile of them men and women, and they're all in heaven today. But there was a course that they used to always sing off. And it was this. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Strength for today is mine all the way and all that I need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness and all I have to do is follow. Boys, I remember singing that wee chorus every Monday night, and I hadn't to sing it too often till I got the gist of the great truth that come from it. My Lord knows the way. My Lord knows the way in which I am going to go. My Lord knows the path beyond me. My Lord knows the future. My Lord knows tomorrow. My Lord knows everything. And my Lord knows, and all I have to do is follow. And you know, that's true, child of God. God knows your tomorrow. He knows what it holds. He knows where you'll be. He knows what problems are there. He knows what difficulties are there. But the beautiful thought is, He knows. And all we have to do is follow. But you know, child of God, even though this morning the Lord, follow, the Lord leads and even though the Lord guides, and even though the Lord knows the way through this waste-howling wilderness of a life that we're living on this earth, because that's all it is. It's a waste-howling wilderness. And as we make the journey through this waste-howling wilderness this morning, my Lord knows the way. And because my Lord knows the way, that doesn't mean that He will not lead us through troubled waters. That doesn't mean this morning, just because He knows the way, that He won't lead us over stormy seas. That doesn't say this morning that He won't lead us through dry and difficult deserts. But here's the message this morning. Even though the Lord takes us through this wilderness of our world, all we've got to do is trust Him as He takes us through. Do you know something this morning, child of God? Maybe, perhaps this morning, for you, you're questioning the leading of God in that life of yours. Maybe this morning you're questioning it because when we come to verse 1 of this very same chapter, we read this, and all the children of Israel, or all the congregation of Israel, journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. And you know, friend, the Lord led them there. The Lord led them to the place where there was no water for them to drink. That was the leading of the Lord. It wasn't the devil that brought them there. It wasn't their waywardness that brought them there. It was the Lord that brought them there. And in verse 2 we see, wherefore the people did chide with Moses. You know, sometimes, child of God, the Lord leads in ways that do not please us. Sometimes the Lord leads in ways that does not please us, but He leads us those ways so those ways will prosper us. 
When you look at the leading of the Lord here, I can tell you, friend, the Lord doesn't lead us through a picnic area. The Lord leads us through trouble sometimes. The Lord leads us over stormy seas. The Lord leads us through the drought, dried wildernesses. But the Lord leads us, and the one that leads us through the wilderness keeps us through the wilderness. But I'll tell you this, friend. Look at verse number 8 this morning. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Oh, the Lord knew the way through the wilderness through those 40 years, and the Lord knew the difficulties, and the Lord knew the problems, and the Lord knew the trials, and the Lord knew all about Amalek this morning who was going to come and attack them. In Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 18, you'll read the story of Amalek and how they attacked Israel. In in Deuteronomy 25 and verse 18, you'll read it for yourself, that Amalek smote them in the hindermost, even among the feeble. Amalek smote them from behind at their weakest point where the women and children were, where the feeble were. And that's where Amalek smote them. And then it goes on to say, when they were faint and weary. And the enemy smote them where at their weakest point, when at their weakest point. Maybe the enemy has smitten you in a week that has passed and gone. Maybe there's someone here and you've been weak lately. And mind you, when you're weak, that's when the enemy comes. Maybe that weakness is brought on by loneliness sorrow, grief. Maybe somebody has annoyed you at work. Do you see when you get down and you get weak and you get weary, that's when the enemy strikes. This morning, God wants to show us how to counteract the enemy when the enemy strikes. You see, child of God, When we encounter the enemy, that's when we need to engage with God. When we encounter the enemy, that's when we need to really engage with God. I want you to come with me to verse 9. And it says in verse 9, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. Verse 10, So Joshua did as Moses had said unto him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Now look at verse 11, And it came to pass, When Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. God wants to speak to us this morning on the hands of Moses. I want you to know what God wants is not me at all. God wants us to notice this morning, Moses' hands were ready. They were ready. Who was the most important on the day of battle here? Do you think was it Joshua on the battlefield? Or do you think the most important was Moses on the hill? I'll tell you who was the most important. It wasn't Joshua in the battlefield. It was Moses on the hill. And I want you to notice something about the hands of Moses this morning. Listen. They were hands that were ready. Ready to do what? 
ready to do business with God in prayer. These were hands this morning, and when hands were held up, that was the sign of intercession. God bless the men, and God bless the women who head for the hill of intercession. Men and women who head for the hill of intercession. Do you know what they do? They see their need of God. I believe that's what we fail to see today as God's people. We fail to see our need of God. That's what we need. Because I can tell you something now, dear child of God, when we encounter the enemy, and when the enemy encounters us, we need to be engaged with God. I want you to notice the little three band of three men on the hill. Do you see those on the hill this morning? Let me tell you something now. That is where it all counted. That's where it was all counted. It didn't count on the battlefield. No, it counted on the hill. Because how things were going on the hill, how the time of intercession was going, how the time of prayer was going, determined how the battle was going. I want you to get that this morning. It wasn't how the battle was going determined the men on the hill. No, the men praying on the hill determined what was going on in the battleground. I'll tell you something now. Joshua knew how to fight. He was a gifted warrior. But it took more than his gift to win the day. Do you know why so many lose? Do you know why so many fall by the way? Do you know why so many are out of the fight? It's because they never saw their need of dependence upon God. Listen, I'll tell you something now. There's men can preach, and there's men can rattle out a few headings, and men can quote, preach their best of their ability. But listen, we can't do it on that alone. We need God to do it. Because do you see when the enemy strikes, I'll tell you, it'll take more than your gift to see you through. No matter how gifted you are, you need God. I'll tell you, do you see the boys in the hill? Do you see them this morning? Moses, Aaron, her, Moses with the hands up. I'll tell you now, it was the minority on that hill that was the backbone of the majority that was on the fight. It wasn't the majority that was the backbone of the minority. It was the minority on the hill in prayer was the backbone of the army. Just shortly before I came to Kilkeel, a man by the name of Harold Green passed away. Harold Green was one of the first prayer warriors that used to pray for me. And every time I sent out my prayer letters, Harold Green always replied, George, praying for you. I still have his last reply in my inbox, and I can't bring myself to delete it. It's still there from away in 2012. And I remember going to the wake, and I remember saying to Nancy, the wife, she says, hey, Nancy, you, you have lost your husband. And I remember standing at the coffin. It was at the coffin where I was standing when I said it. I says, Nancy, you have lost your husband, but I'll tell you now, I've lost a prayer warrior. I've lost a prayer warrior. I remember the first day I went to visit Samuel, John, and Mrs. Park up at their home in Ballinran. Remember that day well. And remember Mrs. Park coming with a wee pile of A4 sheets, and you know what those A4 sheets were? They were my prayer letters that Joyce used to print off and bring down for her to read. 
And she showed me them. Do you know what she said? Betty, you know what she said? She says, I pray for you every day. And I was only here about a few weeks when I went up to see Samuel John and Mrs. Park. I'll tell you now, Harl Green, Mrs. Park, prayed for me long before I came to Kilkeel. And I'll tell you another man, Sandy Heaney was another man because Eunice used to print off my prayer letters for him. And I, any time I'd have went and seen Sandy, there the pile of prayer letters were sitting on a wee shelf there just at the window, below the window. And Sandy was a faithful prayer warrior. Betty Park was a faithful prayer warrior. And I'll tell you when God pulls, or sorry, God takes prayer warriors home, I'll tell you, an evangelist or a pastor, whoever they're praying for, I'll tell you now, it's losing more than your right arm. And God calls prayer warriors home. There's boys today and they're tripping over to get into pulpits. But you'll not get too many boys tripping over each other going into the closet where the fight really takes place. Moses' hands were ready. I want you to look, look a secondly. Secondly now, Moses' hands were heavy. Look what it says in verse 12. But Moses' hands were heavy. I'll tell you something now. You can become weak and you can become weary in prayer. Now, something not reading I've seen and never saw before. You don't read of Joshua getting tired. You don't read about Joshua's arms getting tired, his hands getting tired. No, no. You, you, you'll read where, where Moses' hands were getting tired. And I'll tell you the reason why that is this morning, because the more spiritual a service is, the more weary it is. I'll tell you the more you're involved in the spirit, you'll say to the faith, the more this morning weary you can become. Wonder this morning, is there someone here and you're getting weary? You're getting weary this morning. Your hands are getting heavy. You're praying for somebody. You're praying for something. I'm telling you now, child of God, keep them up. At all costs, keep them up this morning. Don't give up praying. Pastor asked me very recently, and you all know him, how are you getting on in Kilkeel, George? Say, I'm getting on well. Honeymoon period over. Say, no, it's just begun. I'm enjoying it now as if I've never, I've, more so than ever did. You know what he said to me? He says, that's hard to understand. That's hard to imagine. Well, I says, well, I'll tell you why I'm still enjoying it and why I am still being blessed. Because of the people of the fellowship who's praying for me, that's why. I says the folk in Kilkeel, they don't only come out on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night. I'm telling you now, the way I am is because of the faithfulness in their praying for me. That's the secret. Listen this morning, anything that's going on in this place and the blessing is, don't you think it's coming from me? No! You're the backbone of the place. Not me. A whole lot of pastors think they're the king of the castle. God help them. The backbone of every fellowship are the folk who head for the hill in prayer. Not the pastor at all. And I can tell you now, you folk, you're the backbone of this place who pray for me and who prays for the work here. And for those 150 people who get my prayer letter every month via email, 
And I'll tell you why it is, because I see my need of God more today than I did when I ever started to preach years ago. But listen, maybe you're here this morning and the hands are heavy. Maybe you're going, getting a tight at home or something. Maybe tight at work. You're praying for children and they're breaking your heart. And your hands are heavy. And your hands are weary. Listen, don't be giving up this morning. Don't let them down. Man, the devil loves to see the hands going down. Ah, but God loves to see you keeping them up this morning. And I know it's sore. And I know it's painful. But keep going. I don't want to mention names this morning, but there's a woman who prayed for her husband for over 40 years. She thought she would never see him saved. She kept them up. She kept them up. And she saw him saved. Oh, you keep them up. Don't you be letting them down. I know the hands of intercession and prayer can get heavy. Man, you feel like dropping them at times. Don't you drop them. Don't drop them. I'll tell you why Jew, I'll tell you why Moses didn't drop his hands even though they were heavy. He knew, he knew the cost was too great. He says, I don't drop them. He says, we'll lose the faith, we'll lose the faith if we drop them. I'm telling you, don't you lost the faith this morning by dropping your hands. See you prayer warriors here this morning who are on your knees every morning, maybe throughout the day, maybe at night time. Listen, stay on them. Keep the hands up. That's why we're seeing blessing. That's why we're seeing power. Because your hands are up. You keep them up now. I'm telling you, the enemy engaged was fierce. It was ferocious. And even though... Even though Joshua was gifted, he knew how to swing the sword. He knew the antics of every war and battle. It was no use to them. The boys on the hill with their hands up, with Moses with his hands up, you know. Oh, Moses with his hands up was the rock that stayed the day. And you know... The time's gone here, but there's a wee important thing or two to say yet. Listen. Is there somebody here this morning and you're getting it tight? You're in the battle. You're not on the hill. You're in the battle. Listen. Do you see in the back of that program or your bulletin? Somewhere about it there. Hi. Somewhere. Yes, there. You'll find my mobile number. Text me. You don't have to tell me your name. You can you want. You text me. Tell me you're getting it tight. Tell me you need prayer. Because do you see, that's what the fellowship's here for. The fellowship here is not here to talk about one another. We're here to pray for one another. We're here to love one another. We're here to be for one another. I'll tell you when Paul was writing to the Thessalonians, in 1 Thessalonians, he says, Brother, pray for us. He wasn't ashamed to ask for prayer. And you get to 2 Thessalonians, he does the same thing. Brother, pray for us. Oh, maybe your hands are getting heavy. And maybe you're in the faith this morning and you need prayer. For goodness sake, send me a text message. We're not here to, I'm telling you, we're not here to talk about anybody at all. We're here for every one of us from every side of this, within these four walls. We're here for you. We're here to pray for you. We're here to support you. We're not here to talk about you. We're here to hold you up in prayer. That's what we're here for. You don't give a one bit afraid of sending me a text message and say, George, pray for me. Sometimes we're too proud to ask for prayer. And the enemy is overcoming you. Get rid of our pride and get them down to the place where, brethren, pray for us. I can almost hear Joshua shouting up, hey, Moses, pray for us, pray for us. Because you're the one that's going to win the fight. Thank God for the men and women who pray. 
I'll tell you, there are more than the boys that preach. I wouldn't be where I am today only for you. And I say that to encourage your heart. Keep the hands up. Keep them up. God's answering. Moses' hands were ready. Moses' hands were heavy. Glory to God, Moses' hands were steady. Not hard to mind them headings this morning. His hands were, <laughs> his hands were ready. Man, they weren't afraid to get into prayer. His hands were heavy. But glory to God, his hands were steady. Look at verse 12. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat down thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, and the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady. It starts off with his hands were heavy. Now they're steady. Glory to God. You know something, child of God, listen. David had his Jonathans. You know, I've got you. And you know, Aaron and her, it's all about Moses on the hill with the hands up. And I know that that's good. But let's take a wee look at the other two at the last because they're the unsung, they're the unsung heroes. They're the boys that drew alongside Moses. They're the ones that drew alongside the man of prayer, the man of intercession. And they were the two boys that held the arms up to keep him praying. For those of you this morning who don't come to the prayer meeting, we need you there. We need you there to encourage us. We need you there to hold us up. We need you there to help, help us. And even though Moses' hands were heavy, they were steady because of the two boys that come alongside them, Aaron and Aaron. I'll tell you, you need the men like Moses for intercession. But I'll tell you this, you need the Aaron's and you need the hers as well. William Booth was well known for his work in the Salvation Army. Entered into a mission church, Methodist church one night and asked the bishop would he come out onto the streets and tell the poor lost folk about their need of Christ. Do you know what the old bishop said? This is William Booth. The bishop says, do you think a man of my standing is going to waste his time to go out into the streets and work along with people like that? His wife was in the gallery because all women in them days were in the gallery and all men were on the floor. And William Booth's wife leaned over the, over the gallery and says, William, William, if he doesn't go with you, come on, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. And William Booth says, my wife is the unsung hero of the Salvation Army. There's people that I know, there's some of you folk, will never stand in this pulpit. But let me tell you this as a word of encouragement. You are the backbone of all that goes on up here. And I want to thank you for it. And if you're finding it heavy and you're finding it tough going praying, listen, I'm pleading with you, don't let the hands drop now. Keep them up. Hold the fort for he is coming. And you keep the hands up in intercession and in prayer. May God keep us. May our hands be ready. And even though our hands may be heavy, glory to God that can be steady. Keep them up. We'll win the fight. We'll win the fight. And God bless his word to our hearts this morning. Let's watch our closing hymn. 551 in the green, please. 551 in the green. Now as the Lord leads us, I, I don't know, well, maybe, maybe you've had a bad week, but you know, maybe, you're, maybe this week coming in is not going to hold it any good either. But he knows the way through, friends. He knows it. He knows the battles. He knows the tough times. He knows the trials. He knows the troubles. He knows the worries. He knows the cares. You just keep falling and you keep trusting. And keep the hands up in prayer. And may the Lord, and I'll tell you, the Lord will see you safely through. And you'll come forth on the other side.
as the victor. 551, what various hindrances we meet. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 6 as we bring our service to a close. 1, 4, and 6. Thank you.